Well, welcome, Ephraim. Uh, we're back again, and we're doing, uh, I believe, is probably the last in the series, The Word of Jehovah's Power. It's uh, part five, and feelings of the anointing. Feelings of the anointing. So as before, we always say, we got you know the rules if you want to win. And God gave us a formula for all this to work, and it's about time that we realize it. So let's get into prayer and see what uh, the, the Spirit can bring forth today. So here we go. We just thank you, Father, and worship you as we worshiped you, Father, before we got into this teaching. We just ask that you forgive us sin, forgive me, Father, of sins known and unknown against you and your holy covenant, Father. We just thank you for that forgiveness. And Father, we just take authority over darkness above the earth, below the earth, and on the earth in Yeshua's name. You're bound. What's bound in heaven is bound on the earth and below the earth. We just thank you and worship you, Father. Just send out your spirit, Father, ahead of us, your Holy Spirit, to be able to work in my heart and my mind, be able to say the right words, Father. And for those that are listening, to be able to, to take in and absorb, Father. We just thank you on all this in Yeshua's name, Father, and all glory be unto you. So <clears throat> here we are, Ephraim, and uh, let's go to the next slide. And as usual, we got our, our peace process slide that we have for those that want to take a look at it again. And we're going to get into the teaching here. So Got a lot of slides today, and today we have a lot of uh, quotes that we have, audio coming in from the prophet by tying in this teaching. And we're pulling from Warfare for Your Mind, Demonology, and another, a newer one to me that is a gem that uh, is kind of tucked away. It's uh, What is a Prophet CD 2? And it's a, the second CD, and it's entitled The Anointing of Light and Darkness. So we're really going to hone in on that one today and pull from the other ones. Of course, we're pulling from peace and from the fruit of the spirit and casting out of devils. So let's let's move forward. So we're starting off with, uh, of course, the thoughts, words, and actions. The, the word of Jehovah's power. We we have our our individual here with uh, his his flesh, his mind, uh, his heart, you know, his spirit, and his imagination up here. So let's let's see what the prophet has God. To say. And the reason it's important is because we, as Christians, we as children of God, we as believers, need desperately to understand what it is that goes on that we can cause to be different. Okay, we're talking about what we can cause to be different. So we understand that anointing does the work. Jehovah's angels only act on his word. And we see this in Psalm 103, 20. Blessed Lord, yea, his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, harking unto the voice of his word. So we cause things to be different, being able to put the word of Jehovah out there, because that's the thing that the angelic forces, Jehovah's angels, work forward on. Let's go to the next slide. We're just going to build this up and, and, and build this up using some quotes today of the prophet. Realm that we work in, that I work in, that blows the, the, the carnal mind that cannot, <clears throat> cannot even begin to understand what it is that God's doing. Because God is doing something that's far, far beyond what this thing on top of your shoulders can, can, uh, uh, can even begin to ascertain. Now, so the prophet's talking about this thing up here, this gray matter. We call our, our mind and the flesh. But the mind, like it, it can't understand what? The spirit world, darkness and light. It can't understand the anointing. And it's not made to do it. And we say, like in scripture, it says, uh, you know, I do the things I don't want to do. Well, you know, you don't want to do it, but you still do it because the mind's getting involved and you, you just don't, it doesn't understand the spirit world. So it's getting tricked, but it's not designed to understand the spirit world. Let's move on. And we're talking about things that you know. We're talking about things that you know. 
okay? And because uh, we're pulling from the CDs that that uh, you listen to, you know, many, many, many times. But we're just trying to pull like things from these CD series and put them together. So next here, we're talking about the, the, the mind must have peace to work properly. We know by scripture that we have been given what? The mind of Christ. The mind of Christ, and with the mind of Christ also comes something important. It's called the peace of Christ. But the mind of Christ will let you focus upon the things of God if you will let yourself focus upon them. Now, your flesh does not have to mind or succumb unto the mind of Christ. Your flesh can do anything you, your flesh wants to do. You can serve God or you don't have to serve God. But with the mind of Christ in you, if you give that that much chance, what's going to happen is you're going to see it develop itself. So it was interesting when I was going back through Warfare for Your Mind, and, and this is from Warfare for Your Mind. And in the first, I think, second or third track, this is where this is pulled from. But Prophet talks about the mind, but he also is really jumps on top of the fact about peace. He didn't preach it yet at this time, but he's talking about the importance of peace. And, you know, for the for the mind of Christ to be able to have Jehovah's thoughts, words, and actions, we have to get ourselves into a, a, a place of peace. And we understand that through the peace teaching. But once we get ourselves into that place of peace, we can really start to use the mind of Christ. Once we don't have peace, that means we're caught up in the warfare, and specifically we're going to get into that a little bit, but you you, you don't have peace. You, you're going to develop peace so that you know you, you win those things or you don't allow them in at all. But let's go on to the next thing here. One. Now, I ended last night by telling you that only those who know Christ as Savior can have divine peace which takes away worry, sorrow, confusion, and fear. Now, I don't think there's any of you in this room that don't want to be free from worry, sorrow, confusion, and fear. Okay? You don't want, you don't want, you don't want, you, you don't want that in your life. Peace will take you to the place where whatever comes in your life, hey, let it come. Okay? When you reach that point, the, the game's out for Satan because then he can't do anything with you. If, if Satan can get to your mind, if he can get to your mind, he'll beat you. Okay. Peace will control him. In fact, peace is going to make him mad. Now he may decide to bless God to look like a train is coming at you. Okay. But instead of getting out of the way of the train, just get right in the middle of the track. Come on, Satan. I don't care what you bring at me. Be a train, a dump truck, a bus. My God is going to protect me. And if you really believe, if you really believe... That train, if that was so be, was coming at you, you'd get right about here, it would stop. But see, the key is for you to stand and be staunch. So what we're talking about here is peace. We talked about developing it, having a habit. So the love, the joy, and peace comes. And for the mind of Christ to be able to be active and in a place to be able to start to work with it in situations, you have to get and develop it by choice into peace. And then you have to maintain that and then just believe, depending on what's coming at you, to make sure that that circumstance is going to bow to what it is that you're using in Jehovah's Word and, and speaking and putting towards it. But you have to believe it all the way to the point until it manifests. But peace is there. And you have to get it to have the mind of Christ. You can't have the mind of Christ if you don't have peace, divine peace, because you're caught up in other things that are devouring you. Again, why peace is so, so important. Moving on. So we can control our life. We can control it. We we talk about the peace here, the mind of Christ. A little check mark on 
the, the Jehovah's side, not darkness, but we're speaking these things that we've talked about before. So let's talk about this. Say, I'm an overcomer. You are an overcomer. We are overcomers. You can control. Say, I can control my life through the Word of God, through the power of the Raha Kodesh, Slip that end in a. <laughs> you can control your life. Your life does not have to be out of control. You have the power as a born again believer to control your life. And you can control. You can control it. You can control it by having the mind of Christ. And to get into the mind of Christ, you have to go through the peace process and maintain that peace. So you can say what you need to do because your thoughts line up correctly because you have the peace to organize yourself to do it correctly. If you're not at peace, you're going to let something slip through and it's going to come out of your mouth and it's going to be incorrect. So here in Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in all things whereunto I send it. Where I send it. You send it out. Darkness sees it going out. You had enough peace to be able to do it in the mind of Christ. And it's going to try and attack you in that to get you to try and stop it. We know this. So let's move on here. How did that happen? You can open your eyes now. How did that happen? Because you have already a visual input into your mind... That you know exactly when you think of that, there it is, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. You can do the same thing with every situation in your life if, in fact, you will learn to do it. So use your developed piece to be able to imagine, this is the imagine, the visualization, the circumstance you want, and then you speak it, okay? You have to see it. You have to imagine it. You've got to see it up here first, the imagination, the result. And then you turn around and you speak it forward. And then if you add the spirit, the word of Jehovah, spirit filled that we have in the book and our teachings, and you wrap it around that and you send it out, it's not going to come back to you void unless you void it, unless you void that contract. So Psalm 107.20, he sent his word to heal them. And it delivered them from their destructions. It went out. So there was something happening, a circumstance, but they decided, no. They went through, they imagined it. The heart was involved, the mind was involved. And they lined up and they imagined it and they spoke it out correctly using Jehovah. It's his image that went out and did that and accomplished it. Into your mind. So the mind is the key to this thing. Of realizing that we're mind. So the mind is the key to this thing. Of realizing that, bless God, that your problems are not in the place. Understanding that John 10.10 10 is real. That the devil comes not but for to what? To steal. Okay, we're talking about here the devil's going to come and steal. He's going to steal from your mind. How? He has to get into the imagery, your visualization in here. Because when you visualize, your heart is also involved, okay? And your mind. It needs to get in there. And what happens is Satan will influence your imagination to produce his doctrine. Your imagination is connected to your mind and heart. That's how it works. He has to get in here, through here, but this is what he wants. He wants that imagination. That's where he sends his cohorts to be able to try and influence you because they get in your mind, your mind processes, but it's the imagination is the key. That's the key. So let's keep going on. Scripture, and, and it's sad because somehow we, just we have let Satan, we've let the powers of darkness, and, and it's sad because somehow or other we have let, we have let Satan, we've let the powers of darkness come in and begin to entertain into our what? Mind? Remember last teaching we talked about entertain, tricked by, entertain. 
So entertain is to detain and enter. It's going to come in and say things from darkness to influence your image. So you're detained and you're imagining that suggestion into our minds. So it's a trickery trick. They come in and trick you. But the trick is for them to get into this imagination. Once they're in there, my goodness. But what is the trick, the super trick? Let's go on to the next thing. So here, we're going to talk about two other things. Let's hear what the prophet has to say. He first has to steal from here. He has to steal from your mind. And when he can steal from your mind, he's got you. You know how? Okay, he's got to steal from your mind. We know that. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. That is the power of our enemy. To be able to deceive and to be able to draw us in another direction. Other than the way that God wants us to go. So there you have it. He wants to steal and he wants to draw us away from the direction that Jehovah wants us to go. So they're going to put, and we're going to listen. We don't want to, but we are from time to time. And they're going to lie and seduce. They're seducing spirits. Worry, sorrow, confusion, fear, doubt, unbelief, pain, anguish, others. Those things come in here. And then what do they influence? Our imagination. We visualize it. Our heart's involved. We're visualizing it. And then guess what? We're putting that out there. And then we're going to act it out. And we're going to speak it because we entertained it because we were seduced by it. We were seduced by it. It happens to all of us all the time. All the time. But what is he stealing? The imagination. The imagination. What is the imagination? The imagination is the thoughts. We've got the actions down. We're getting our words really, really a lot better. But if we need to do all and be in the perfect will of the Father, we've really got to get those thoughts down, don't we? Absolutely. Next. And the mind game that gets played is very, very simple in itself. The sa Satan plants something and then you choose what you're going to believe about that. Okay. Satan plants it, and then you just decide what you want to believe about that. You can even find... So Satan plants it. I know we're trying to get it in from the anointing to come in, but this is where the battle is, and it's all for this territory up here. Imagine visualization so that we're going to speak out one or the other. But Satan plants all sorts of things, but what does he plant? What What is the super trick that he uses? Let's keep going. Let's hear from the prophet again. Words are the, words are the most powerful things on this universe. Here again. Words are the most powerful things on this universe. Always have been, or within this universe, I'm sorry, and always will be. Words create. You know, we we went through a whole lot last uh, last quarterly of trying to get you to understand that that uh, the images. The images that you create about any given subject are going to do one of two things. They're either going to take you over the top or they're going to take you under. And so we, we, we diligently went at the fact of trying to get you to change the way you think, to change the images in which you place in your minds. And you can do that. So the prophet here is talking about desperately getting us to understand the imagery that we place in our minds, the image. We have to get it to line up with Jehovah because from that come the words and words create the world that we're going to go into in this, in this kingdom. Words are created from images, from images. Images that we create in our thinking come from our mind and from in our heart, what's in our heart, what we allowed in our heart. You know, we ask ourselves, what am I thinking? It determines what words I speak. It determines whose doctrine I'm believing. Every single word 
we will be judged by on that day. Every single word. And every single word is going to tie us to light or it's going to tie us to darkness. And that originated back into thought. And from thought, that originated back into, I'm above my head because that's the thinking bubble, back into the image or the visualization that you have. That's what Satan wants. That's what Satan wants. Because once he can do that, he can get you to create his doctrine here. Because he can't create. Never can, never will. Let's move on to 14. Let's hear what the prophet has to say. You're going to see more and more how people are losing out with God because they can't take proper stands. That they fall into, if they fall into a snare of Satan, they don't even know that they have been snared. Because they can't understand that their mind is something given to them by God to be able to move into the things of God with. But if you use your mind all the time in a reverse mode, and you can do that. You ever been around people that everything they say is negative? The first thing that I know that we begin to teach when we begin to teach faith, we begin to teach, learn to speak the positive things first. So why can't we just remember our minds to use these tools, the tools that we talked about here, prayer, fasting, the armor, the fruit, the Bible verses, the Holy Spirit, angelic forces, and so we can have the mind of Christ. Why can't we do that? Why can't we all the time? Because things are going to come in and we're going to be negative. When we start see, saying the things that don't line up with this, then we are anti Jehovah. We are anti the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ isn't going to get into the negativity, into the sin, because that has nothing to do with the mind of Christ. And if you are getting into those things and verbalizing them, then you're not connected to the Father, and then you don't have the mind of Christ, you have the wrong image, and you've been seduced. Yeah, but this this is fine. No, no. We're here to do the thoughts, words, and actions of Jehovah continually in all situations. And you know what? When you hear that, your mind's like, oh, and the excuses that want to come in, and, the, and it just wants to get up and fight because it has absolutely nothing to do with anything but to be controlled by you, and it wants control because it can't understand. A couple more things here on 15. So discerning the anointing of light and darkness is difficult. We're getting into that, into the demonology side. So let's hear what the prophet has to say. Let me turn the volume up. I wish the volume would stay up in all these. But... The anointing of light and the anointing of darkness. It's important for us to understand that there is also an anointing that comes from darkness. We must understand that. It's unfortunate, and, and for years, I, I don't know what people think that they, I think that they believe that they're operating in the anointing of God, and many of them are operating in familiar spirits, spirits that aren't of God. And those spirits are very, very difficult, if not almost impossible, to be able to entertain, being able to discern, unless you can discern them by the Holy Ghost, or the Raha Kaddish. So the prophet's talking about discerning with the seduction, the familiar spirits coming. So they're going to seduce you. They're going to trick you. But if you keep your peace full, and we talked heavily about that for the last couple months, the odds of you being tricked is dramatically lower because you can hear the Holy Spirit. If you do not have peace developed in your life, you are not going to hear the Holy Spirit. People say, well, and they just want to complain about that. The mind wants to complain about it because the mind considers it work of something it doesn't understand to do what is needed for the peace to go up with praise and worship and reading scripture and putting it out there and saying and keeping your mind occupied with Jehovah, not occupied with other things that it wants to decide and, and, and are, that are more understandable or playful in this world. Yeah, that's what the mind wants to do. Let's move on. 
the next one here. We have to be careful to understand that darkness can only repeat that which dark, light has done. The powers of darkness can only repeat or redo that which God has done. The darkness is not a creator. Okay, darkness does not create, and that's important to know. Now, darkness is the opposite of light. It can only trick you into making you think that it's light. But, you know, it's a hidden trick of them. So they're going to put something in, and they know how your brain works, and they want to put it in because it wants you to justify what they're saying, allowing it in, so you can affect this image, this visualization, which affects your heart also, and boy, oh boy, guess what you're going to speak. But that's what it wants to do. Let's go to the next one. Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded, and Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. Now that word enchantments here, it begins to break down into the word magic. Now, this is witchcraft. Now, what I want you to stop and think about, what made one not magic or witchcraft or enchantments and the other one to be so? Well, it's pretty simple because God was in the first and not in the latter. Interesting. The prophet asked us to think about this. So if God, Jehovah, is in our thoughts, in our imagination and visualization, and then in our speaking, we're lining up with the power of Jehovah. If our imagination does not have Jehovah in it and something that lines up with him and we're putting it out, we're getting into enchanting. We're getting into the anointing of darkness and participating in his doctrine. Quite amazing, isn't it? People say, well, so many things are so innocent. So many things are just, you know, that's fine to get away with this. And again, there's the lie. But the question is, why is it fine? Why is it okay? Why have we made it okay? There's something, what are we missing? What are we missing just to let that happen all the time? Well, let's take a look. Next. No guidance, feelings are carnal. Whoops. Let's go back one. Let's get this volume up. Wish the volume would stay up, but here we go. Now we're gonna talk about feelings. they should buy this house or not buy that house, go on this vacation and take this job or that. They wouldn't do that if in fact they could go to church, go to synagogue and be able to receive guidance by the Holy Ghost, the Rahal Kodesh. But the fact of the matter is, there isn't any guidance. What church service today has been mistaken for the anointing is having a crowd, number one. Number two is feeling the anointing. And I'm here to tell you, feelings are wonderful things, but they'll get you in trouble because they're carnal. And that's the major point that we want to talk about today. Feelings. Feelings. We have so many things that come in to our minds that are feelings. Thoughts that are not our own, but they're feelings. And our mind can understand that. And darkness knows how to trick us, to steal from us. And they want to put feelings in. And these feelings are things that the mind is going to be active in. The mind is going to be active in. They're carnal. And then we're going to do what? We're going to put that into our imagination. 
And it's not going to line up with Jehovah, his anointing, because his anointing is not feelings. It's not feelings. So when you have all these feelings that are coming, and that's what darkness does, because it has what? Like in the series, Casting Out of Devils. In the series, Casting Out of Devils, you have, the I think it was in four or five uh, CD, Prophet talks about different things. So let's take the one, addiction. So addiction. So you're imagining when you're addicted, feelings come in, which feelings are, the addiction is the spirit. It's coming in. And then it's putting feelings on you. And the feelings could be a craving, a compulsion, dependency, a weakness. And then that comes into your image. And then you imagine what that thing is. And then you go out and act it or you speak it because you started thinking it because you imagined it. But that's what darkness does. That's what the, the, the demons and the devils do. They prey on feelings and they try to get you to think that that is okay, and then it comes in, and that is the anointing of darkness using feelings, and then you go and do it, and you're justified in it because you're in la-la land. I'm in la-la land. So being in la-la land, I think it's okay, even if I know it's wrong, and I do it anyway sometimes because of feelings, and that's not the way that it works. It's not the way the anointing works if we're chasing the anointing. And you know what? We get into situations where we know that's wrong, but we get into situations where we think feelings are the anointing. Interesting. The anointing is supernatural. It works from a supernatural realm. It does not work as a feeling. It works as power. And when the power of God by the anointing begins to penetrate, as it's penetrating into this room today, hopefully into the minds and the hearts of everyone you that's, of you that sit here today, you begin to have feelings. Interesting. Prophet's talking about the anointing is the power of Jehovah. It's not feelings. It gets into the mind and the body, the anointing. And then what happens? Your body will start to, your mind will start to have feelings. Because it doesn't understand the anointing. Now, if you have built up your peace and you are truly going after this thing, you're going to be able to handle this. If the anointing is coming at you and you don't understand how to get true peace, you don't understand and put the time in that you need to be able to do more for the Father than you are for your flesh and mind, you're going to have a real hard time. See, familiar spirits use, because they're familiar with you, familiar feelings, which are the doorways in your mind, to easily get in and to get into this imagination and to be able to imagine things so that what? You're imagining something that's not the will of God. Quite a thing. Quite a thing. And sometimes you think that you're working in the power of Jehovah and you're not. And you're not. I'm not at times because I'm not doing enough, but I'm learning. I'm learning about how to properly organize my thoughts and get those doors shut that are feelings because those feelings are just darkness, manipulating us, tricking us with feelings. See, let's look at the definition of feeling. It's an emotion, a state, or reaction. So it's an emotion. It's an idea or belief, especially a vague or irrational one. <laughs> Quite a thing, isn't it? The feeling is an emotion such as anger or happiness. Strong feelings of pride well up inside of me as an example. You know, I think a main feeling would be an immense gratitude. Okay. He was unable to contain his own destructive feelings, destructive feelings. So feelings are coming in, having an emotional response. What prophets say, what do we get taught? If you're having an emotional state, don't make any decisions. Don't do anything. Get yourself out of that emotional state. Get yourself out of the attack of the feelings. Build up your peace and then get yourself into a position where you can speak what needs to be spoken so you can win the battle. 
winning it with peace. So what are, what are other things? Emotion, sentiment. Let's go to the next thing. Sentiment. Okay. It's, it's like feelings, right? So sentiment that people have is an attitude which is based on their thoughts and feelings. So it's an attitude. So you've already created something and you have an attitude towards it. So you have a bunch of feelings that you have towards something and forcing it through your thoughts and feelings. So public sentiment rapidly turned anti-American as an example, or he's found growing sentiment for military action. So it's bunches of them. But here it goes on. Sentiment is an idea or feeling that someone expresses in words. So now it's not just going in your head. You got a bunch of them coming at you and then you put it out in words and you put it out in words. So let's go on here and say, okay, what are some things like that? So emotions, feelings, let's go to the next one. Emotions. So these things are all kind of the same type of thing that the liar, the seducer, and his cohorts use these things to sneakishly get their true definition in of what they are. So an emotion here is a feeling such as happiness, love, fear, anger, or hatred, which can be caused by a situation that you are in or other people that you're with can be caused. You let it in. You know, happiness was an emotion that Reynolds was having to learn, or her voice trembled with emotion. Another thing is emotion is a part of a person's character that consists of their feelings as opposed to their thoughts. So that, what does that mean? You've let it in so many times that it's now a part of you and you automatically go with these feelings that you've been trained through that doorway that has made been so big by that darkness, that, that evil spirit or whatever. It's so familiar with you that it comes in and it's to your imagination automatically and it's part of your character. It's funny when people say, well, this is who I am. Now I understand what that means. It means you've made a doorway so big because you've been attacked so many times by these different demons using these feelings that you've justified the door staying open to get into your mind and your imagination. You've made a highway and then you just constantly go with that. Because it's so big and it's so often, it happens so many times, that's your character. And that's what darkness wants. It wants to make that highway. And for us, we want to make the highway Jehovah's highway, his thoughts, his words, his actions. And we want to close those doors and we want to be able just to work with him. So it's such an amazing thing, isn't it? What darkness does through feelings. And we think it's the anointing. Or we're justified in it because it's our character. It's not your character. It's not your culture. Your culture is Jehovah, which we're still learning. Let's move on. What are we on? 20 here? Okay. So what do we have? Feelings, sediment, emotions. They come in. So seducing. We're going to use these things. And we're going to get them in your mind so that these guys can come in. So weary, sorrow, confusion, fear, doubt, unbelief, past pain. They're going to use these different types of things that match with them, that match with them. Sometimes some of them have used the same ones and feelings and emotions to get in your mind so that these guys here can play with your imagination. So you speak what? You speak them. So you speak them. They want to get in, but they trick you by using feelings to penetrate you because you wouldn't let in confusion. But you let in the feelings of confusion. Oh, yeah. I know I'm trying to work on not doing that. Or doubt. I'm not going to doubt. But I let in feelings of doubt. So it gets into my imagination. Then I speak doubt into this world. And what happens in our life? You shall manifest in your life what you speak. And darkness wants to get in, and this is what he does. And it's feelings. What's in your imagination? Feelings have nothing to do with the anointing. It has nothing to do with supernatural power. It has nothing to do with Jehovah. Nothing. 
Nothing. It's carnal. What is it and where does it evolve? And how does it come down to us and our feelings and making some dumb decisions because of our feelings and calling it the anointing? What causes that? I'll tell you what causes it. Well, what causes it? So great when the prophet gets gets going like that. And, uh, you know, and I encourage you, get go to, uh, what is a prophet CD2? The, uh, the anointing of light and darkness or the casting out of devils and demonology. You, you'll, you'll, you'll see these pieces in there. We're, we're putting it together. But let's get to the answer. Because what was the question? What causes us to be so dumb about our feelings? Talking about me. Okay. Why am I so dumb about my feelings? I'll tell you exactly what causes it. Because we have not kept his commandments. Part of the prayer that the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, taught us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Being delivered from the evil one, being not led into temptation comes to us because we have scored our flesh and began to receive or, or, or replace it with God's Eternal word. Some of us were never able to score our flesh. Some of us were only able by feelings. Some of us were never able to live the word only in areas that we wanted to live the word. Powerful, isn't it? Powerful. We've done the actions and the times, dates, and places. We're speaking a lot better, but our minds fellow Ephraimites, my mind, all this stuff coming in through feelings because I had a feeling and that's why I didn't get it out of my life because I didn't understand the suggestion from that devil. Has to, he, that devil has a, a, an attribute. It has a, a focus in a box. That's what it does, that demon, that familiar spirit. And then it has certain things that it says and tries to different ways to knock, to get in through the mind, to penetrate the imagination. Once that happens, it's over. Because you can't have the mind of Christ at the same time as having those feelings from darkness coming in and occupying the same spot. So, you know, we were taught to like one another. We were told to love one another, but Prophet said, you know what, let's just start with liking each other. So, we're, we're capable to implement these things, but some of us got stuck and we got stuck. And what are we going to do about it? If we truly love Jehovah, love the Lord thy God, and your neighbor as yourself. If we truly love Jehovah, we're going to start to recognize these feelings. We're going to start to write them down. We're going to start to understand what's attacking us. And we're going to start to recognize the trickery of the trick, the, the seduction of the anointing of darkness with these feelings so we can get them out. But we have to truly love each other. And to truly love each other is to get the thoughts lined up. We, we're going to have our thoughts, our words, and our actions lined up. Well, we started with actions because it's easier. Then we got into the words. Now we're getting into the thoughts. And that's what Prophet meant when he said, hey, we've got to love each other, but let's just start with liking each other. And that's what we've done. To truly love each other, to truly love the Father, and to truly love one another, is getting these feelings out the door and not allowed back in and watch our lives change. Watch the anointing of Jehovah drop into our lives and brothers and sisters' lives because we're going to do this together. What was that? Number 20. All right. Now let's go on. The anointing breaks the yoke. Darkness judges with feelings. Let's see what the prophet has to say about that. But the anointing didn't bring feelings. What the anointing did was bring the power to destroy the yoke that's in your life. Your feelings, unfortunately, will rise up and begin to judge as to what that is, ask the anointing. 
and will then begin to judge and call it as they want to call it. Okay, interesting point here, because the anointing is going to become because somebody else is pushing an anointing because they developed a piece with the way that they needed to so they could have the mind of Christ that anointing could work. Or you've done it in yourself to the point with the peace process so you have the mind of Christ so the anointing can work. But when that happens, what happens is the mind doesn't understand it. And you're going to try and judge things with the mind. And those are feelings are going to come in and it's going to try and steal it from you. It's going to try and steal it from you because it doesn't understand. Quite a thing. Let's go to the next one. If you really believe that train, if that would so be, was coming at you, it get right about here, it would stop. But see, the key is for you to stand and be staunch. For you to stand and have a peace that passeth all understanding. A peace that, brothers and sisters, 99... Okay, we're talking about the peace again. The prophet's talking about you got to have the peace and you can stand and have the faith through the, through the patience to be able to allow the anointing to do the work to get that done. And the earlier one we just listened to just said that once that anointing is working, judgment's going to come in by feelings to try and come against that in that patience period and peace to be able to come. And it wants to come and take it away from you, but you want to keep letting the anointing work, so you're not going to let those feelings in. And if you let the feelings in, you're going to allow in the darkness itself because you let it in because that's how it gets in the door. So here we are at 22. So feelings in imaginations are cast out and returned. Let's see what that means. When I begin to take authority, when you were standing, remember when I said, and you begin to say, you found stinking ears, or whatever that was, be gone and be out of here. I'm going to tell you, spirits were going through the, up through that roof. It's one of them in the hole in that roof. All over the place they were going up. You were delivered. You know why you were delivered? Because you spoke it in the right way. And like I said, those spirits, they don't have it. They're, they're in the alternatives by any of those spirits. As I said, when you get over to this other category that I told you to leave alone, then it's going to take a, t a big time anointing to deal into that. Somebody that is into prayer and fasting. And, uh, but for what you were doing, they have to leave. Now we need to answer this question. What do I do, prophet? If I get home and well, you know, I kind of let my guard down and when that thing comes back, the third or fourth time, first few times, you're not having trouble with it. But again, you have to identify when that thing shows up, the image. And, and please, what you really need to do is go home and take your notes. And I pray to God you took good notes. And and you need to uh, begin to put in the categories, uh, what, what do I first do? Uh, as we taught you, you've got to check the image. What image are you seeing? What 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 is that? And if it doesn't line up with the word of God, wrong. So when that image of when, you know, you stood for what you stood for last night and bless God, those things are gone. Now, when it comes back, that same image that caused you problems before is going to be the image you're going to see. All right. And we've heard that before in the casting out of devils CD series. But feelings are the thing. Is trying to get in through the door. Divine peace, if you can stand there, you will stay in control and break the yoke to darkness. Spirits are going to knock, presenting you feelings to sneak into your image. And then the door opens a crack, and a little more, and a little more, and you don't even know it. And they're coming in, and they're altering that feeling. And over time, you ever had that? Well, you're fine, you're fighting it, you relax a little. And then something came in, something happened. Oh, okay, whatever. And then a little more, whatever. Well, a little more. And then it got wider. And then you're in this mood. Feelings. 
the super seductive tricks of darkness. You present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You know what he's talking about? Get the sin out of your life. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, just exactly what we talked about in it, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable, excuse me, and perfect will of God. Pretty self-explanatory. Getting the mind of Christ and keeping the mind of Christ. The perfect will of God, being able to have his image coming out, burning up on the altar, right, in your heart. You're the vessel. You're burning up darkness as it comes in. You're not allowing those feelings in. You're getting rid of those different feelings and things that have tried to seed inside of you so that it leaves and it's not around you. It's not there anymore. And you've burnt it up. You've sacrificed it. And watch how you talk different and you act different and you think different. And let's start there understanding what the feelings are doing and recognizing them. And it's going to help in a big, big way to understand. And when you start to recognize what you're putting your time into, remember that 80% we talked about in the other series? Then you're going to get into what? In Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, what's are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, what sort of things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on those things. If the emotions that are going to come in from darkness won't let you have those because you're going to create one image at a time. We're not creating a whole bunch of images at once. It's one image at a time. That's it. One image at a time. So if we're focused on these things or using these things in the word of Jehovah when the feelings come that are proper, we're going to be spending our time with Jehovah, and it'll be his image that's produced. So, you know, it's 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 quite a thing. I mean, even looking at uh, uh, Philippians uh, uh, 2.14, I do all things without grumbling and complaining. Okay. That's saying, I do all things without the feelings, so I don't grumble and complain. I recognize those. Or... Uh, I'm no longer called forsaken or desolate. Getting into Isaiah 62, 4. I no longer call those things because I didn't let those feelings in. I figured out that's the key that opens the door for that darkness to get in. The feeling. Am I pounding on feelings and pounding on feelings? Profit pound on feelings and feelings for the thoughts and imagery and everything else. In little pieces through these different series... And for me, personally, I couldn't understand it until I understood peace because I went through demonology and casting out of devils a lot for months and months and months. And I wanted to preach it, and I couldn't yet. And then it was the peace. And I understood the peace. And then I understand using the word of Jehovah. And now I understand much more because I didn't hear every time that he said feelings throughout all the other series and added it up because he never did a series called Feelings. But he did a series, and there's a good part in there, the anointing of light and darkness that talks about it, that I'm pulling from here and amplifying it with the other series. But isn't it interesting that he left it for us to really search out and to pull this in? Well, Ephraim, brothers and sisters, you know, this, this teaching went on a little bit longer than expected, so it looks like we're going we're gonna to cut that in half. But isn't it just amazing what... The prophet Tom Decker left us as first fruits to be able to, to to nourish on through the word of Jehovah and what he went through in his life. What we're learning about the imagination, how it's connected to your mind and your heart, and that and the, and that's what darkness is craving and finding ways to be able to get in and to be able to get into your imagination so that you will have feelings, it's trickery things, so that the darkness, the, tr the true root of what it is, but it sends little signals in so it can get into the imagination. As soon as it's there, you're starting to imagine for it instead of having the mind of Christ and, and imagining with Jehovah. And, you you know, for me, it was thinking, hey, you know what? Oh, I just got to keep away darkness, and here's the different types of demons that they are. It's like there's a whole other level. 
whole other level of feelings that they put out there to try and get you to bite on, to, to hook you, and and to and to and to get you in. But what it is with within their secret little trick that they have, it's also the way to take them down because you can recognize what's on the bait, those feelings, and if you can understand and recognize what feelings are, then you can recognize eventually as you study and, and research it what type of things are trying to attack you from through others and yourself internally situations and circumstances and now we got them now we got them now we got them we got darkness exactly where we need them through putting this together through the different pulling from the different teachings from what did we have there the, the anointing of light and darkness we had peace we had casting out of devils we had warfare for your mind and others through the spirit and uh, it's putting it together, putting it together from what happened with our mentor. So uh, thanks again. Let's just end in prayer. Thank you, Jehovah, for the word from the prophet, for your words coming for life. So we have eyes to see and ears to hear, Father, and now the ability not to be doers, Father, just, just not hearers. Now we can do more. Father, we just thank you for it all in Yeshua's name, Father. Amen. Till next time.